You sent me up here to check. I'm doing that. I think attention should be paid. He doesn't have enough time. Harry, listen to me. We don't think you have enough time. You copy that? We do not think you have enough time. You sent me up here to check. I'm doing that. I think attention should be paid. <laughs> I know a story about a crow. I hate your stories. I know a story about a boy who hated stories. I could tell you about Sir Duncan the Tall. Those were always your favourites. Those weren't my favourites. My favourites were the scary ones. Oh, my sweet summer child, what do you know about fear? Fear is for the winter, when the snows fall a hundred feet deep. Fear is for the long night, when the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die, all in darkness. That is the time for fear, my little lord. Thousands of years ago, there came a night that lasted a generation. Kings froze to death in their castles, same as the shepherds in their huts. And women smothered their babies rather than see them starve and wept and felt the tears freeze on their cheeks. So is this the sort of story that you like? In that darkness came for the first time. Years after the blast, the global temperatures would still be abnormally low and life would be difficult. No one knows exactly how long it would take for things to get back to the way that they once were. Now, I know all this sounds very scary, but we're actually in luck. No! No! While scientists do say we are overdue for an eruption, one won't likely happen for tens of thousands of years, maybe more. The last eruption happened roughly 640,000 years ago, and on average there is an eruption every 700,000 years or so. So, in reality, we actually have very little to worry about. Back in like this, Harry, but we are picking up some activity around Dante's Peak. This is a joke, right? Dante's Peak. Now, what do you think the odds are against an eruption up there? A thousand to one? More like 10,000 to one. What's the depth? 10 to 20 kilometers. Next year, we're going to be number one. Woo! You're going to love this. Come on in. It's great. Is it really warm? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really hot. Yeah, well, I think that's why they call it Torrance Ed Hot Springs. Hey! <laughs> so, is this great or what? Mmm, sure beats the hell out of LA. Yes, it does. Mm. Well, maybe we should move here. I don't think so. I've done that in a week. <laughs> it's nothing. Some animal must have scared me. Jerry? How was that? <laughs> A 23-year-old man who died in Yellowstone Park last summer was allegedly trying to find a place to soak in the area's natural hot springs. Portland, Oregon man Colin Scott was killed on June 7th when his body dissolved in the boiling acidic waters of a hot spring in the Norris Giza Basin. According to the official incident report, Scott's sister Sable filmed the whole thing on her cell phone, but the video has not been released to the public. An official said there are signs in the park that warn visitors not to fool around with its natural geothermal features. But the Scott siblings were allegedly trying to do just that, by looking for a place to take a dangerous dip, known as a hot pot. Sable Scott filmed on her cell phone as her brother checked the water temperature, only to slip and fall into the churning hot spring. Although rescue workers found Colin's body, their efforts were disrupted by a lightning storm. And by the time they got back to the hot spring, the body had dissolved in the water. No citations were issued in connection hot with spring the Hot spring-related injuries have claimed at least 22 lives in and around Yellowstone since 1890.
never seen them before. What's going on here, Harry? I don't know. How big of a problem do you think we have? Well, it's too early to tell yet. But I think you should call the city council meeting. That's not a great idea. It's up, Karen. Get around Karen, the other side and get this thing going. But I tell you, I would... Paul, something's going on. There's some seismic activity. All right, here we go. What do you think, Stu? They're minor quakes, but they're right in the middle of it. Maybe I'll tell him to call it a day. Harry. <laughs> Paul, I didn't get you. Say it again. <laughs> Great job, Harry. Look, I don't want to talk out of turn, but I think you should call a meeting and put this town on alert. There's a hell of a lot of activity up there. Harry, I know it was intense up there, but I don't want to cause a panic over a few minor tectonic quakes. Minor? The biggest one we measured was 2.9. I don't give a damn if it was a one. Harry. One. Those quakes were shallow. Paul, damn shallow. I was up there. I felt... Harry, you don't... And they weren't tectonic. They were magmatic. This thing is going to blow. Harry, I'm warning you. I'm not going to have one of my people scaring the hell out of everybody because of guesswork and hunches. Another 48 hours will tell the tale. You get a grip. Son of a bitch. I'm okay. I don't believe that the scientists of the California Institute of Geological Study, but Channel 10 News. <laughs> It's okay. There's a lot of water coming okay, in. This rig can take it. The engine's got a snorkel. Oh God, look at those cars. They're crazy. Never made it. Yellowstone National Park is a 3,500 square mile nature preserve in the state of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It is a common tourist spot because of its incredible views and wildlife, but underneath Yellowstone lies the most powerful supervolcano on the planet. It contains enough forest to wipe out most of the U.S. and lower global temperatures for years. So what would happen if Yellowstone were to erupt this year? Before the blast, there would be serious warning signs something was about to happen. Massive earthquakes and unusual behavior from animals within the park would be a big giveaway. The ground would swell with most of Yellowstone being lifted. Eventually, one of the earthquakes would break the layer of rock that holds the magma in, which measures 35 by 55 miles wide and 3 to 9 miles deep. People in the immediate area might have some warning to get away, but it wouldn't be enough. Flights would be grounded all over the country, maybe even the world, and life as we know it would come to a halt, as people would likely be in panic. The eruption would have 2,500 times the force of Mount St. Helen in 1980, and be larger than any nuclear bomb ever tested. Anyone within a 100 square mile radius would instantly be killed, and Wyoming and the surrounding states would be wiped off the map. The eruption would blast approximately 240 cubic miles of rock, dust, and volcanic ash into the sky, which would spread throughout the world and lower global temperatures by up to 20 degrees for years. Yellowstone is a supervolcano, one of the few in the world. Scientists warn that this supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park is on the brink of erupting after 878 earthquakes struck the area in the last two weeks. 
This is an article dated today, July 9th. Since June 12th, an unusually high number of quakes were recorded around Yellowstone with one at the 4.4 magnitude. The quakes represent the highest number recorded in such a short space of time in five years. Uh, the last time something like this happened was back in 2014 and that spurred the United States to enter an agreement with countries that would be able to accept Yellowstone refugees. And the United States had been paying tens of billions of dollars for a 10-year contract that expires in 2024 for countries in the Southern Hemisphere to take in uh, Yellowstone refugees. The thing is, who is on this list of Yellowstone refugees? If you live in the area, have you been told that you will be evacuated? I'd like to know. If you are in the area, please let me know. I have no idea who is on this list. Now, since June 12th, we said they've had a huge number of quakes, one at least one at 4.4 magnitude, and that's worrisome. 1,000 times as powerful as the one at Mount St. Helens that took place in 1980. A thousand times more powerful. This particular volcano, Yellowstone, has been dormant for more than 70,000 years, but that does not mean it will not erupt again eventually. It's impossible to predict when that might occur, but seismic activity can signal a potential eruption. Four years ago, researchers discovered that the underground magma chamber of the volcano was more than twice as big as they believed, encompassing an area of land that measures 56 by 19 miles. So the magma chamber is at least twice as big as what they thought. Huge ash cloud could devastate the western United States. It would likely leave as many as four inches of gray ash on the ground, destroying midwestern crops. It could also spew out gases like sulfur dioxide, creating acid rain, and leading to global cooling by reflecting the sun from the earth. While it might not wipe out human life entirely, it would certainly create a lot of damage across the western side of our nation. Another concern in that part of the country is a gigantic well of molten carbon that was discovered under the park earlier this year, just this year. And this year, we we're only in the sixth month. Yes, a gigantic well of molten carbon was discovered, spanning 700,000 square miles. Big changes in the surface deformation, gas output, and the hydrothermal system. Well, the surface deformation has occurred. Even though this latest round of earthquakes will likely and hopefully amount to nothing, just like similar earthquake swarms in the past, the news serves as a reminder that it never hurts to prepare for events like this one. Oh, God. This was taken the summer we built this place. Ryan was six months old. There's no time for a trip down the way anyways. Rachel, Ruth, come on, we gotta go. You got everything? Okay, children, let's go. Feet up, please. Volcanic activity has turned the lake to acid. Acid eats metal. Mm -hmm. Is the boat gonna sink? No, 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 it's not gonna sink. Hey, you're scared. You can have my fist, but. Down the street, merrily, 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 merrily
Okay, don't worry. All right? Go up there with Grandma. That's it. There's a good girl. Look, here's your cat. There's a good girl. Keep your feet up. Okay. Keep your feet up. Come on, darling. Keep your feet down. Keep your feet up. Keep your feet up. Very, very close. Move over there and keep the boat in balance. <laughs> Get up, Graham. Go over and balance the boat. It's all right. Look, Graham. Very, very, very close. 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 government gave us this in October of 2016. Let's just assume they haven't been fracking for oil in those areas or doing anything to mess with that. And I know the roads melting has been a thing for quite some time and some people would be like, oh yeah, that was three years ago, but it's it's been getting worse for the last two and three years. And it's, you know, all right, so people have been dying since the 1800s in these hot springs and, uh, you know, this, let's just say this is all natural. The, the last three years, the animals leaving the area and all these strange occurrences, let's just say it's all completely natural. I've been watching one of my favorite alert maps, I'll leave the links uh, down below, since like 2011, and uh, I've always had strange nightmares, and I guess I'll just, let's just say my, my dreams have to do with uh, all the stuff that I'm looking at. Let's just say I dream about the stuff because I'm looking at the stuff, so I dream about the stuff. Yeah, those states, they're, they would be gone, but, you know, assuming it's not Yellowstone and it's just the Cascadia fault line and that doesn't do anything to Yellowstone, here are some screenshots that, man, it's just, it's more and more every year. And I know earthquakes are natural, like you could have like 3,000 a year around Yellowstone, but, dude, just look at these. And check out the map every once in a while, you know?